Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2005 Duramax, no crank. The owner said that the problem, you know, he had a weak battery, replaced the battery, it was starting fine. Then one morning it was a click. He had to click it several times and then it fired up. Took it to work, drove around all day, no problems. Next day, he had to click it six times. He's like, it's a classic weak or bad starter. Starter solenoid is not engaging whatever so he replaced the starter as you can see you got the car quest box over there so new starters in what did it do with the new starter it didn't even click uh oh what's the next thing well he had someone come over scanned it for codes something with the BCM was wrong he's got the theft light on then they replaced the ignition switch again, classic car quest. Looks like this. Nothing. Still nothing. No crank. Doesn't click, doesn't do anything. So let's scan it for codes and see what we come up with. So as you can see here, I have two scanners. First one, the launch, you know, think tool. I could not auto ID the vehicle. That's a red flag. You can't talk to the engine computer. So I manually punched in the VIN and in powertrain system, it says P0601 control module read only memory ROM. That's not good. Look at the other modules, U1000 codes in every single module. So, um, and then you go to the engine computer, you can't read codes directly, you can't read live data. So if, if the engine computer is offline, you look at the diagram for the starting system, uh, you know, you're dead in the water because the engine computer controls the starter relay, well, first and foremost, so you have no crank, and then it controls everything else, so it's not going to fire up even if it does crank. So we need to figure out why this engine computer is offline. I am trying the Snap-on Varus. It doesn't even list engine in here. It cannot talk to the engine. If you go to engine, automatic, codes menu, display codes, no communication. Okay. Um, let's see, can we talk to the transmission? Yes, we can talk to the transmission. Transmission says no codes. So let's go right to this engine computer, figure out powers and grounds, where it lives, and see if it's a bad engine computer. Because, you know, where did this code come from? P0601, that's, that's not good. So the engine computer lives right here in this box. Um, it's kind of dusty and dirty, so let's blow it off, unplug it, get it out of here. And we'll look up a diagram for powers and grounds communication wires and check all those out before condemning this uh, engine computer. Okay, so with the engine computer disconnected, obviously we have no communication with the engine computer. Um, so now we, let me plug it back in and we'll see if we get that same six zero whatever one or five code. And then if we still get the same code, we'll, we'll check powers and grounds, but it's looking like a bad brain box. There's the part number right there. All right, ECM's plugged in. Let's turn the key on, see what happens. All right, here we go, key on. Still no crank. Let's see if we set any trouble codes. Read fault code, engine. There it is, P0601, control module, read only memory, ROM, last test failed. So the snap-on didn't pick that up. And if we read data stream, you know, engine data, data one, you know, can we see 
battery voltage. Last time it could not read any data. It was just spinning, spinning, spinning. So, do we really need to check powers and grounds? Yes, let's check powers and grounds before calling this computer. So after a few minutes, possible wrong vehicle selected. Okay, let's pull up uh, powers and, and grounds diagram. Okay, so we've got the OE diagram for powers and grounds to engine control module. So we're looking for battery positive voltage coming from PCMB fuse. So C pin or uh, connector C1, pin 20 and 5. Then obviously the computer won't turn on the main relay, so you know we don't really care about these. We should still be able to talk to the computer. And then ignition voltage one is pink wires on C1, 19 and 10. Ignition zero, accessory start, C1 pin 18 pink wire, and then four grounds, C1, pin 9, C2, 36, 73, C3, 44. So I have all those written down. We're going to check them with a test slate, and if these are all good, we're calling the engine computer. Alright, so with the key on, I'm just using a one amp test slate to check powers and grounds on this blue connector, that's C1. So first one is C1, pin 5, battery positive, check. So here's the pin layout, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, let's check pin 20. Let's see here, pin 20, that'll be this one right here, looks good. So this goes pretty quickly, as long as you do your homework, C1 pin 10. And then 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's the first ignition power. So let me go through all these and we'll see if any of them are missing. Okay, so all powers and grounds check out 100%. Um, we could see if we can energize this EDU relay. So on pin 52, if we pull that down the ground, it should power up pins um, 56 and then 10 and 14 there. 42 there, but not really necessary. Okay, last check I want to do here while we're here, just to make sure the owner did a good job installing the starter, is just uh, instead of the starter relay, just jump these two wires, see if it cranks over. So I took the starter relay out, pins 30 and 87. So on pin 30, we have power. So all we need to do is jump. 30 to 87, let's see if this puppy cranks over. Ready? So it's in park, perfect, just perfect, needs a computer, so we'll order one up and be back to program it.